We've been brushing up on the MicroLogix PLC a little bit lately, uh, learning about how we can communicate with devices over Ethernet. We even did a little PID. And I put out a post asking you what else you would like to learn while I have it set up. And one thing that a lot of you asked for was Modbus. Initially, I was going to say no because my MicroLogix doesn't do Modbus, but I can talk us through it and I can talk us through what um, we need to look for to make sure ours can do Modbus. So, if you hadn't caught the other videos, we took our MicroLogix 1400. Your 1000 will work just as well. And we got it communicating with both our PowerFlex 525 drive and our IO link from Turk. Now, my initial inclination when you said Modbus was, well, this does Modbus. And so I was going to do a video on that. And then I got to look at mine won't work. So first, let's talk about what we need to be looking for. In RSLogix 500, let's go File new and i'm going to open up the wrong plc right now just so we could talk through several of the wrong ones that you have so first of all latest and greatest micrologics 1100 is a series b we're going to select ok to it and we are going to double click on our channel configuration and we're going to go to channel one and the big box we're looking for here is modbus TCP, and it is not on any of the 1100 PLCs. So we're going to cancel, and we're going to go control our properties, and we're going to change this to the one PLC that I have here, a MicroLogix 1400 Series A. I'm going to get a warning about resizing, and we're going to double click on our channel, channel one, and we get a few more options, but not the Modbus TCP. So finally, we'll double click on our properties, hit our drop down, and yes, we need the MicroLogix 1400 Series B. And it doesn't matter if it's a Series B or one with the enhanced security. We're going to click OK. Yes to the resize. Double click on our channel configuration. And now we have Modbus DCP enabled. And that's the box that we really need. And I'm going to go ahead and walk through it completely even though we won't be able to actually test this out. We're going to uncheck the boot P enable and go in and enter the IP address of your PLC. If you're using one of our trainers, it's 192, 168, 110. And we have a subnet of 255, 255, 255, 0. And we'll click OK to that. Make sure you get that box right there. Check for the mod bus. Otherwise, you won't have the next option. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our input output category and bring down an MSG instruction. So go ahead and right click, insert a rung, bring down the MSG instruction, and we'll double click on our setups. And we have our channel, our Ethernet. Normally we're selecting channel one integral, but with that box check, we also have channel one integral Modbus TCP. So we'll select it. And then you need to get information from whoever is providing this instruction for you. Now, what's really awesome about the Turk module is who is providing it for us is in the Turk case, it is their web server. So we're just going to type the IP address of our Turk Fin 20. If you're using one of our PLC trainers, it's 192.168.1.15. I have this one set on 20, and that gets us to here. And then we're going to go to the documentation tab up here and then Modbus TCP memory map. And this tells us where the actual data structure is. Now, here is always the trick to Modbus. In fact, this may be the most difficult trick. And even when it's documented half the time, it doesn't make sense is did they start at zero or did they start at one? So, hey, their numbering is starting at zero. So register zero is their first one. Now, if we go over here and we select that we're going to do a read register. So it's going to be a read holding register. And then we have a data table address. This is where you want to put it at. I'm just going to put it at N7 colon zero. And then we have Modbus data address. This is what do you want to read out of that device. You notice in the MicroLogix, it starts at one. And here's where it gets so confusing. One in this is going to be zero in this. So all our numbers are going to be thrown off by one. 
And I'll be honest with you, almost every single time, really, I have to just try it and find out I'm off by one. But okay, next we need an RI file. And I skipped a step here. I didn't assign us a message file. So let's back up and let's do it the slow way because, yeah, I, I kind of just typed here in one of the videos and I realized later I wasn't being clear. We need a data file for a message. So we're going to right-click data files new and we are going to select a message. It already filled down on nine because it's the next one available. All we're going to do is click OK. And then we need our RI rounding information file. So we're going to right click new and we are going to grab an RI rounding information file. This doesn't use the extended information file. So just routing information. OK. And now we can go here. We can grab MG. We want nine colon zero. And this is going to be my mod bus read. Now down here, we're going to put our RI 10 colon zero. So RI 10 colon zero. So in this case, 4001, we're on port 502. That is the default. And we need an IP address, which in the case of this is going to be 192.168.1.15, at least if you're using our default track. Now, the only other item that we really have here is our size and elements. Now, an element depends on what you put here. Are you doing a 16-bit? Are you doing a 32-bit? You want to try to match this up to what your device is talking. And over here, we see that it's in 16 bits. Now, after that, it can get a little hairy about how much data should you read. Now, in my opinion, on this particular Turk, I definitely want zero because one, that includes our discrete inputs, which is our um, capacitive and inductive prox. We definitely need channel one because that's going to give us our laser distance sensor. I'm sorry, that's channel zero gives us our laser distance sensor. Channel one, channel two, and mainly we need the encoder. So we need down to 50. And honestly, I would probably go to 64. Now, the next thing that we're getting into is some diagnostics info. Can't argue that in some cool stuff. So if we go to the end of our diagnostics, that gets us to 69. Now, 69, remember element zero, that's 70 elements. So I probably would go 60 or 70 elements. I probably wouldn't get into this unless you had a specific reason. And if you notice, we get some big jumps where we're getting some custom stuff and we're doing some outputs. So I'm going to put a length over here of 70 and keep this at 16 bits. Now, I can't test this, but I feel this is very close to what you need. And if you run into any issues or you find out a correction, throw it down in the comments. Now, let's talk one other thing. We're going to hit the verify button to make sure we understand here. We're going to open up in 7. That gives us elements 0 through 69 over here. Now we are reading elements one over here. Now this has been an obstacle before, and I'd be curious if anybody does this. Since we put 4001 here, is it picking up and is it reading register zero or is that register one? I get the feeling it's going to read this one right here. Everything's going to be fine. And coincidentally, since we took element one and put it in seven zero, I believe all our data would line up perfectly fine. So down in the comments, let me know how that works out as far as communicating with Modbus.